Crypto markets have taken an absolute beating lately, and a lot of people have given hope, and they're not really sure about this crypto thing anymore, and they might have questions like, hey, what's going to happen to major cryptos like Ethereum? If we go into some crazy bear market, you know, is there actually any opportunity left? Well, in this video, I actually want to talk about how I think the exact opposite is true, that because what we just saw in the crypto markets, there is now a brand new opportunity. That means a ton of insane potential for Ethereum in the coming year and beyond. Because after all, we're seeing reports like this from ARK Invest of Ethereum reaching $86,000 per coin in the next 10 years, which makes the hollow price targets of $10,000 per coin seem pretty reasonable by comparison. So I'm going to break all that down in this video as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis, particularly with Ethereum, and also an Ether holder myself. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then make sure you smash that like button down below, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. As I can see, only about half of you in my YouTube analytics are subscribed, so it'll really help this channel out if you click that subscribe button. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step-by-step -step, start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about a huge potential for Ethereum, the ecosystem, but also the asset cryptocurrency itself in 2022 and beyond, okay? So I'm gonna be very clear in this video that I'm not saying like, hey, you need to go in and buy a bunch of Ether right now. There's a huge opportunity on the table. I don't know what your particular financial situation is. And I'll put the disclaimer on this video at the top. Like this is not financial advice. I'm just telling you how I look at this and how I make my own decisions. But the real simple point that I wanna make at the top of this video that I'm gonna expand upon and actually back up is that, you know, the big crypto crash that we just saw actually presented a massive opportunity on the table, particularly for Ethereum, the asset itself. And how you have to think backwards of what everybody else thinks who, is like just ready to check out and not think about crypto anymore because the easy gains went away. But that doing the opposite of what most people do could have the biggest upside profit potential over the long term. And so now why do I think there is a big opportunity? Let's actually back that up. Okay. So let's just start with a couple of assumptions. Number one, I don't think that crypto in general is dead despite what the market looks like right now. And out of all the crypto projects out there, the Ethereum network in particular is insanely valuable in terms of what it can do for utility. The network is still you know, growing, it's remaining strong. And for that reason, the Ether, the cryptocurrency associated with that network is also insanely valuable despite what the market is doing right now. So to illustrate this opportunity with a little bit of simple math that's really important to understand if you're getting in the crypto space is the risk reward ratio for something like ether the asset itself right now okay so if you have the assumption that ether you know is an is a valuable asset that crypto is not going to zero and that ether's price can increase over time from where it is today then this risk reward um framework is very helpful for doing that. So basically, it looks like this. The number of units that you are standing to risk versus the number of units you stand to gain and how you can quantify that. So for example, right now, if you were to buy Ether at the time I record this video and it reaches all time high again, that would be about a doubling in price or a 2x or 100% return on investment. So you have to think about it in terms of likelihood. I mean, how likely is it over the long term, even if you don't know exactly when that's going to be, would Ether reach its new all time high again with all the network adoption that we have going on over the next, you know, three months, six months, nine months, two years. In my opinion, that's a pretty likely scenario over that time frame. Now compare that to, you know, just a few months ago when Ether was at, you know, close to $5,000 per coin. Okay. You don't have any price history above that. So it's hard to, you know, quantify the risk reward from a historical perspective in terms of likelihood. You're just kind of guessing, hey, how likely is it that ETH, you know, doubles in price from here? And how likely is it that it cuts in half in price from here? So it's, it's more likely based on its history that it would cut in half in price based on whether it's going to double in price. And so with that line of reasoning, um, you know, the risk reward ratio for ETH, the asset itself, is way better down here than it was, you know, a few months ago. And therefore, is a much better opportunity, in my opinion, now than it was a few months ago. All right, so that's an analysis of Ether from just a simple risk reward scenario based on its actual price history, okay? But now let's try to forecast beyond, you know, even the next couple of years to the long term, okay? Because I don't think that the, you know, hollow price predictions of 10,000 per Ether are just completely off the table based on what happened. And I think, you know, we could even reach higher than that on a larger time frame. So I'll pull up this analysis from ARK Invest talking about Ether market cap reaching $20 trillion in the next uh, 10 years. So that's a little, that's over $80,000 per coin. In fact, it's about $84,000 per coin. That'd be a 35x return on investment from the price of Ether today, which would be a pretty insane return over the next decade. Okay. So, I mean, you could be even more conservative than this and back that, you know, 
that projection off by a half. You could even divide it by three. And those super conservative numbers would still produce a pretty significant ROI on Ether at the current price levels. And there's no guarantee on exactly how soon that would happen. You know, like I'm saying, we could go into a longer bear market. We don't exactly know for sure. But if history, you know, is any indication of the future, which I think it will be in this case, that even if you bought the tippy top of, a, you know, a cycle, that holding for many, many years is going to produce, you know, significant gains, even if it takes, you know, three, four, five years to reach significant multiples of our last all time high. So now why is that the case, though? Why could these why could Ether reach these massive price targets everybody thinks it is? Is the cryptocurrency price just going to go up on its own just magically like pre-programmed? Well, to me, we arrive at these, you know, price targets based upon actual fundamentals behind the networks themselves. Like I say at the top of this video, Ethereum is an insanely valuable network and therefore the cryptocurrency itself is insanely valuable. And that's a, that's a logic leap for a lot of people that say, hey, you can't say that just because people use Ethereum doesn't mean the cryptocurrency is valuable. Well, my opinion, it actually does because my thesis on this channel is always, you know, as you create technology that has you really utility behind it, and that attracts people to use that technology during its demand. And so far as cryptocurrency is integrated into that, as in you need the cryptocurrency to use it, that that generates demand for the asset itself. And based upon sheer supply and demand economics, that causes the value of the cryptocurrency to go up. And based on this line of thinking, you know, we have just started scratching the surface for what's even possible as blockchain technology in the first place. And Ethereum is a leader in innovation for all that stuff. Okay, you know, we're just doing DeFi NFTs, a little bit of metaverse here and there, maybe some gaming and a handful of other smaller use cases. But we haven't really scratched the surface on big stuff that you could potentially do with blockchain down the road, like, you know, tapping in the derivatives markets, the real estate markets, you know, tokenizing equities, like all these things that we could possibly do. We haven't even tapped those markets. Now, some of the reasons are regulations, some of the reasons are scalability, but I think some of those things can be overcome. And once we get past them, it could absolutely open the floodgate for more and more users on the platforms and therefore more network activity and therefore more demand for the cryptocurrency and prices go up. And so we can actually look at some metrics to back this stuff up. Okay. So, uh, Despite cryptocurrency prices going down recently, you can still see adoption metrics for ETH holding pretty strong, okay? So this is actually the number of active addresses on the network. You know, it's been somewhat flat in here over this, you know, range with some peaks, maybe when the prices go up. But we don't see the active users on the network just like tanking when the prices go down. So it's actually holding pretty strong. And we're actually seeing a growth of users on the uh, layer two ecosystem for ETH. This is where you build a second layer on top of Ethereum and you handle out of those transactions, okay? And so that could be part of the reason we see a flattening here as we see adoption of L2. Now, I don't know if it's enough to explain everything, but definitely some uh, Ethereum activity is getting offloaded to L2 slowly but surely. Now, it doesn't look like it right here in the graph because this is total value locked, right? This is highly affected by cryptocurrency prices because it's calculated based on cryptocurrency prices. But see, if you switch the graph over to ETH terms, okay, this is how much ETH is actually being used, which is growing significantly. But right here, you can see that you know the Ethereum monthly active developers at all time high. And basically, that means more people are going in the space to actually create new products. And as you create more products that work with one another, it increases the value of the network because the network effect goes up. There's more stuff that you can do that generates more demand for the network itself, which brings in more users, which causes more people to hold crypto and price goes up. All right, the last major thing that I want to talk about that's a huge opportunity for ETH coming on the pike is a future event that's actually going to affect the price of Ether most likely. Okay, so what is that? Well, that's the merge for Ethereum 2.0 when uh, basically proof of work gets replaced by proof of stake. All right. So that's supposed to happen in 2022. All right. And so basically what's going to happen is Ethereum 2.0 is getting built on a separate blockchain. It's going to get merged back into the Ethereum that you use today, ETH 1.0, and staking is going to go live. And so whenever that happens, uh, ETH is going to become deflationary. Okay. Because ETH is getting burned whenever new transactions are created. Now, and uh, when we go to proof of stake, the ETH issuance created by the blockchain, whenever new blocks are mined, is going to get cut in half three times, hence the triple halving. And the net effect of that, as you can see on this website here, ultrasound.money, if you simulate merge, that means ETH is going to be uh, minus 3.6% inflationary or 3.6% deflationary on an annual basis. So assuming that the network activity even just stays the same, 
then there's going to be less and less ETH every year. And that force alone would cause you know the Ether price to go up. All right. So those are my top reasons why I think that there's a ton of opportunity for ETH in 2022 and beyond. Again, I'm not making this video to say, hey, you need to buy some ETH right now. We could have more pain in the markets before things get better. What I'm saying is the opportunity has drastically changed from a couple of months ago, despite what most people think, especially if you're thinking on a very long term term time horizon. Again, it's not financial advice for you. I don't know your financial situation. This is just how I personally think about it and how I plan to play these markets. So that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fast at this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. Help people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.